Now seems to be thinking of every way he can to make peace overtures. He's just uh, reunified the time zones. North Korea had, uh, had deliberately chosen a different time zone than South Korea. South Korea was on the same time zone as Japan. And he, he wanted to make the point that uh, the North was different and independent. He has even reunified that. Mm -hmm. So is this all uh, symbolic peace overtures or is there more to it? Well, we're, that remains to be seen. Um, certainly, he has made a tactical shift, uh, and we've seen that. And I don't want to minimize the historic moment that this was between the two Korean leaders. I'm a Korean American. I've been to DMZ. I grew up there. It was very historic. It was very moving. Question is, um, is he really serious, or is he trying to buy time um, to really wait out the Trump administration? When you look at the joint statement that came out, it was great in symbolism, but it, the question of denuclearization was still not clear. And of course, you know, there were other summits in the past, 2000, 2007, there was five joint uh, Korea declarations, and it's not so different from those. So there's a lot of feel-good symbolic stuff, but I'm wondering about denuclearization. He said in the joint statement there was commitment to denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. But of course, North Korea used to have a very different definition of what that means. They used to mean also South Korea, uh, ending U.S.-South Korea alliance, getting U.S. forces off the uh, South Korean territory, ending uh, extended U.S. nuclear umbrella over South Korea. So. There's more questions that are raised uh, than there are answers right now. So we have to see. Uh, Tony Blinken, what about all those past uh, deals? Are they, are they worth bringing up or uh, is that sort of uh, unnecessarily skeptical? In other words, the, uh, the, South Korean, uh, the North Koreans have signed 2007, 2000. Uh, they pledge not to do any further tests. But this does feel different. This feels like... Uh, you know, I mean, for one thing, or even you know, you just the, the 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 scope and breadth with which he is approaching it does feel different. Look, some context for Reid. A, a, a couple of months ago, before the Olympics, we seemed to be heading inexorably toward conflict. Now we're talking peace. We're talking diplomacy. That's a good thing. But I think Sumi is right to inject some notes of, of caution and, and restraint. How did we get here? Um, first, relentless economic pressure on North Korea, initiated by the Obama administration and smartly continued by President Trump. But second, North Korea has made so much progress with its nuclear weapons and missiles that it can afford a timeout. And third, there was probably some effect of fire and fury from President Trump. Both Koreas desperately wanted to avoid some kind of preemptive war. But now's the hard part. We're at the beginning of a process at best, uh, not the end of one. It's incredibly complex. It took about two years to negotiate the Iran deal. And there are so many traps. North Korea has been a master at basically stringing along negotiations, wringing out economic concessions, and then walking away. And as Sumi said, we've seen declarations in the past that are at least as forward-leaning. We've seen on denuclearization far more forward-leaning language in previous years. And one final thing. Uh, Kim has gotten a very, very important um, uh, thing out of this. They have put peace before denuclearization. Obama, Bush, said that, that peace would be a reward for denuclearization. Now they're on parallel tracks, and in fact, the peace track is on a faster track than denuclearization. Whether Trump actually goes with that uh, and supports that really remains to be seen. Uh, Elliot Abrams, uh, I, I think the fundamental question, is that in a way Tony is, uh, is raising, is so far it does feel like Trump has made all the concessions, by which I mean for 30 years North Korean leaders have wanted to meet the American president. Uh, for 30 years, they've wanted to talk about ending the Korean War. The, the problem was always that South Korea and the United States always said, first, you have to stop your aggressive actions. First, you have to, in, in substantive ways, denuclearize. First, you have to you know, stop being a rogue, rogue state. Then we will reward you with these things. Aren't they getting rewarded with concessions before they've done anything more than things like reunify the time zones? I don't think they're being rewarded yet. I mean, first of all, we have to say 30 years of American policy under presidents of both parties has failed. Under those years, I mean, that's when they got ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons. So continuing the same policy doesn't look like it would be a really brilliant move. Uh, we'll see if they get any concessions. I mean, my own view is that, that Kim looks at the JCPOA and basically says, I want one of those. I want a deal where I can pause on my ballistic missiles 
and on my nuclear weapon development for let's say 10 years and get a huge economic reward. And I don't think the president is going to give him that, but we'll see what happens when they meet. Uh, just quickly, uh, I want to ask Sumi Terry, as a, as a Korean American, it must have been fascinating just to to hear from this guy. I mean, the South, North Korean leaders are people we never even knew what they sounded like. Uh, we've learned <laughs> things about you know whether he has a kid. You know what he sounds like. Has that been re revelatory to you? Oh, absolutely. This was a huge intelligence uh, uh, success in terms of trying to get to understand Kim Jong-un better. We, we didn't even have a recording of Kim Jong-il's voice. I think he spoke once publicly. Uh, he was a very introverted guy, Kim Jong-il was. And Kim Jong-un now, he, I, I actually heard his voice, uh, the way he was speaking, his mannerism, his, how he acts with others. I mean, I think this is a huge intelligence uh, benefit in terms of trying